One of very important skill in the jewelry cat design is to understand how to set the stone properly and apply to your cat design. However, I've been asked so many times is my stone is not right, it is being stretched in the cat model, how can I correct it? In this video, I'm going to show you why your stone gets stretched in your cat model and how do you fix it. Are you ready? Let's get started. I'm going to start with an example here that we have the rail and then we also have two cross section to creating the surface. We can use the sweep one rail and that's a rail that's a cross section and then you'll get something like this. It is a single surface. So to arrange any of the pattern of stone on the top of it, we can use a create UV curve. So once you click that you have this area and then that will show uh, the area of this surface. So we're going to bring in the stone. So this is a stone I'm, I'm going to bring in. And if you wanted to know um, how to make this stone, I have a video for it. And also I have the file and the description for you to download if you're interested, uh, just uh, starting from this point instead of draw your own stone. Let me change the stone into the red color. And I'm going to arrange the stone just like we think it should be. So I basically want to use the array and we want to array maybe four of them. And we're going to go from here to roughly about here. Okay. And of course we want to have two rows. I'm just going to copy it to the bottom. All right. It doesn't matter where the location is, but I intentionally want to go into the edge there uh, to show what, how it was stretched because this uh, curvature over here. Now let's make this into a surface and we are going to flow it back. We're going to use flow along surface. Then in this case, I'm going to pick up all of them as my object and I'm going to pick up this edges and also the target edges. Notice that my stone is stretched. It's more like an oval-ish shape. It's because uh, the curvature on the surface, right? So let's go back and do one more time. Now we are going to use the same command. Uh, one thing is really important right here, uh, rigid equal no. And that means you are okay for any of the objects being stretched. So make sure right here, the rigid equal yes. All right, so we pick up the base surface and we pick up the target surface. All right, so now you can see the stone is not stretched. However, it is not in the ideal place. As you can see, it is more is already fall out to here. It's because the stone is not stretched. So it has to adjust the placement in order to get the stone in place. All right, the easiest way I will do here, uh, let's do one more time, rigid equal yes, and we want to record a history and we want to click the base surface and we want to click the target surface. Now, if we are have a, a history record, we can simply just move it back to whatever uh, the location we want it. Well, if your stone is small enough, it won't get much of a stretch. It's when you have a big stone, then that will stretch all the way to the side. Okay. Another way to do it is uh, to extract the ISO curve on this surface. And instead of using the flow along surface, you want to use a flow along the curve instead. Um, so that way may reduce that stretch. Let's take a look on the second example and it happens all the time, especially when you have this type of a pave setting and then you have a stone, you know, flow it back and it stretch like this. And for the member that doesn't know how I get to this point, I just want to quickly to show you. So we're going to use flow along surface again. I'm going to pick up all the object, hit enter. Um, let's say rigid is equal no, and I click on this edge and I click on Okay, so you see the stone is stretching, especially when it close to the middle, it's almost like a teardrop shape. If you use what we were talking about, rigid equal yes, and then you want to click on here and also click on here. Notice that the stone is much better, but it's overlapping. 
And you could do record a history and kind of uh, scale moving this around, but it's going to take a lot of time to find the right placement. So if you are in the pave setting, for example, in this case, I won't actually use flow and I will actually manually arrange the stone for, or something like this. And how I do that, uh, let me show you. It's quite simple. I'm going to delete all my arrangement first. So first of all, I have the stone that I place on the first row there on my right view. And then I'm going to come in over, copy another one. And then you want to place something like here. And you can size the stone if you want to, but um, I will suggest you to do some calculation, like find out what's the circumference of the place that you are going to uh, flow and or you're going to arrange the stone and that way will be more accurate. Uh, a lot of pave setting, it take a lot of uh, calculation. All right, so now I have, oops. I have something like that and it's not aligned. So let's go ahead to align right in the center, hit zero. So they will be aligned over there. Now you also want to check the gap. I usually like to have in between 0.1 to 0.2 millimeter and this demonstration, I'm going to just leave it there because this is not a true size for my model. All right. So then uh, we are going to simply just use polar array. So I'm going to pick up this one, hit enter. And I'm guessing 13 of them. All right, so it's touching, so I have to change to 12 of them. All right, so it is not touching. And I also want to record a history just in case I want to move the places. Uh, maybe I want to move up or down. This thing is the same. So instead of have 13, we might need to have less. So let's guess eight of them. And you want to see if it is touching anywhere that you don't want it. And so kind of, you kind of grab the idea for what I'm doing here. Uh, so you want to arrange row by row. And uh, this one, let's use five of them. Five is still too much. So maybe I just want to have four of them. All right. And you want to record a history as well. Now, since we record a history, I forgot if I record on a second one, I can move in this up and down to rearrange the stone going closer on now the second row does not uh, record a history. So you get what I mean here. Or if you feel like this is too big and then you want to scale it down so it's not touching the stone, uh, you can do that as well. This will be a, a better way for you to arrange your pave setting. And when you doing the polar array, you can also polar array the prong as well. I hope you find this video useful. If you really wanted to know what is the proper way to do the stone setting in your CAD model, I have a completely free course for you. This course is going to guide you through basic terminology for setting the stone in the CAD model. And we will do a simple prong setting and also going to show you how to custom the simple prong setting into your custom design and you can apply to your jewelry right away. Sign up the free mini stone setting course and the link is in the description below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next.